This is Shalise and Drew. Oh, it says my name. <laughs> I started coming to this church in 1961, and we always had lunch, and Peterson Hall was so full of tables, you had to walk sideways to get through. <laughs> I go to a, a soup to nuts church, and, and what I meant by that is, you come, if you're willing, and you're gonna see it all. All different stages and phases of life and human development. You're my brother, you're my sister, and I guess we figure out this road together. <laughs> so it was that kind of a family feel. I've been calling Maker's Home since, uh, I'd say, the fall of 2018. About 15, going on 16 years. Yeah, I've been going to the church for over 10 years. It's been about 14 years for me, and about 13 years for you, right? Yep. About 25 years, maybe 30. It's been a minute. That's a long time to do anything, really, let alone know people and be loved by people for that long. It was so exciting because I felt like God was in charge and all we needed to do was hang on and see where he was going to take us. <laughs> I wish the walls could talk. You know, and sometimes in our moving forward, we, we forget the legacy, we forget the stories, we forget all of that that made us this. So it's great to say we've been here 100 years. Have we kept the stories alive? The three wise men knew of Jesus and this Messiah because it was the influence of what Daniel did 18 generations ago. And so for me, I'm excited about like, man, what, can, what is God calling me to today that's gonna inspire the next 18 generations of people that are in the San Diego North Park area? We started here when we were newlyweds with two big jobs and no kids, and then we've had all of our children, every single one of them in a different space though, because we were very uh, migratory. The very first was in Golden Hill, and then South Park, and then North Park, and then North Park, and then downtown, and then downtown, and then Point Loma. So it was a lot of crazy, just last minute, like it's 11 o'clock at night, hey, we got a guy, he said he can give us this baptismal, you wanna go down to TJ? And you're like, yes, let's do that. Um, you know, and then we'd get back at like 3 a.m. on a Saturday and start church three hours later, you know? When I came down to San Diego, I was in a pretty vulnerable state. I had just made a huge decision to go all in with Jesus. Walked into Makers, didn't know a single person, instantly greeted by Shalice. They do their first song and Shalice gets up to do announcements. I'm like, oh, like, met her, she was awesome. And she starts giving her spiel and she goes, and have you met my new friends, Megan? And she said my name on stage. I just felt really seen in that moment. I was a single working woman in my 30s and it can be kind of a lonely place to be in a church and so, um, I felt very welcome at home and valued for just being who I was. That radical belonging is powerful. You know, the first time I was at this church, I was leading worship on stage. Like, who does that? Who invites somebody you don't even know? I was working at a coffee shop, and the worship leader at the time was like, you should come lead worship. I'm like, you are a crazy person, I'm in. How can you not stay? I mean, even if you just wanted to watch the show every Sunday, you just wanted to come back because you never knew what was going to happen. It is a huge honor to carry on a torch of a hundred years of life, of stories, of ministry, of kingdom work in the city through these churches. And one of my favorite memories has been the blending, the merging of North Park Baptist and Maker's Church into this new version that we are now and thinking about the next century, which is wild. That was a really powerful moment where for us as a church body, we got to experience the hospitality of another church body. And I think in that, we saw a lot of what we are called to do as Christians. Mm -hmm. You know, as a church, we were feeling rather untethered and unrooted. And we were really praying for history to be a part of. And um, meanwhile, at the same time, we didn't know that North Park Baptist was praying for a future. And, um, and the way God brought us together, um, he answered both of our prayers overnight. And then he gave us a deep, deep history to be a part of and gave North Park Baptist a future. How do you navigate that within the church? Because you can't stay the same because this is how Jesus wants it. But how do you stay the same because this is how Jesus wants it? 
that's kind of how the heart of this place on the corner has been from the beginning. It's like, God's in you. You've got this relationship. We come alongside to help you kind of navigate that. But in the end, you've got to hear what God's saying to you, and you've got to move in that direction. Now I don't even remember who came from where. Like, we're all just makers with this deep-seated root of North Park Baptist everywhere. And to not remember where you came from because you're all just one, I think that's pretty beautiful, too. I think what hasn't changed is this, this group of people loves the Lord and loves each other. You make me uh, be encouraged that uh, this goes on. <laughs> it doesn't stop with my generation or even my kids' generation. Yeah, it's kind of pinch yourself, but it makes me really excited for the next 10, the next 50, the next 100. Like, what will we become? It has evolved so much over the past 100 years, and I can't even imagine what it will look like in 100 years from now, but I'm really excited to see that integration of you know our co-vocational model with the church and the marketplace and, and what we want to do with this building. Really, I mean, for 100 years, um, our people, whether it's the North Park Baptist or Maker's Church, have been incredibly influential around the city. I'm really looking forward to on the other side of our renovation for our building to kind of catch up to that, for it to be um, as influential in the, in the city as our people are. I'm just excited to see how that um, reshapes the culture of church and the expectation for what church should be, that a church should not be this thing removed from a community, um, not the big you know, chapel on the hill, but something that is in the muck and the mire and in the nitty gritty of people's lives. I think the best news is like, we're not going anywhere. Um, we have a history um, that roots us here and we have a known future that says we'll be on this block. I've walked here for the whole 15 years. I lived two blocks from here. You know, he placed me right in the center. He says, all right, here you go. What are you gonna do with it? This is what we want to do. We want to be here for good. I hope and pray that we continue to be this healthy sanctuary, this safe haven, where people can learn to abide in God's love. People's lives will be changed because we're here and that the community will be better because we're here, being the hands and feet and eyes and ears of Jesus. <laughs> I hope it's a community, a church, that is truly here for good and that the neighborhood, the city around us is better because we exist. What is that? You know, what is it to make us something that God looks at and says, that's what I had in mind. I don't know that we really know what heaven looks like, but the fact that we want to be like that, I think is pretty cool. We have to constantly be looking out, uh, not in, looking out to see what's the heart, what's needed in our community, that we can be the hands and feet of Jesus to them to bring them the love, to, to bring them the compassion, to bring them the inclusivity. Pastor Glenn and Glenda mm -hmm. and Rob and Stephanie, mm -hmm. that has been their heart and their mindset from the very beginning. I think such a beautiful example of not just what's right in front of you, but how is this impacting after I'm gone and after yeah. I'm out of this leadership position or out of, after I leave this community. And so that to me is just such a beautiful legacy that I just want to thank them for. We are living in your legacy. And when Maker's Church came here, we stepped into a, a home that they had been cultivating for decades. And so we are already torchbearers in decades of, of beautiful, humble work they've been doing. 100 years is intimidating, definitely. Thinking about how do we do this place justice, this gift justice, this inheritance justice. Like what can we do to continue the ministries that have been happening and continue the movement of God in this city and in North Park, specifically through this church. This hundred year history is an inheritance. It's something that we didn't work for, we didn't create, we didn't deserve. It just came to us from the grace of God. And um, we feel really responsible to steward that. I am of an age where I am just amazed at what y'all can do. And so the exciting part is knowing that I don't have to do it all. I don't have to figure, me, Stephanie, I don't have to figure out 
how to impact the next generation. I'm really excited about you all affecting each other. <laughs> and just thinking, you know, how can we be more loving, more inclusive, more bold, just really um, be in a place that people can feel seen and feel known, and ask hard questions and walk alongside people that are asking the same questions. And maybe if they've had a horrible experience with church or Christianity, they can find healing and hope here. And I think if we can carry the you belong before anything else, because we'll constantly be becoming, and sometimes belief wavers, but always belonging, I hope that never changes. I love where he's brought us and trust that he will continue to take us where he wants us to go. It's good, it's not over, it's not done. A lot of work, but this place right now, we're getting it, we're getting it. And what more could you ask? What more could you ask for than to have the sense that God is saying, you're getting it, you're getting it. I'm good with that.